I'm Brigham Larson with Brigham Larson Pianos. This piano was just completed today as I make this video. And uh, it's a 1918 Hospi is the, is the brand. I think it was made in, well, I think it was like Nebraska or something, which is very unusual. Um, anyway, made in 1918, which of course is the last year of World War I. It's also the first year of the, um, the Spanish flu. I think it was 1918. Anyway, that's an old piano, but it's totally rebuilt now and it's in great shape. This is a super cool type of wood. Um, what it technically is, it, it, people have called it a number of things. Um, I've heard it called tiger wood or tiger oak. Um, I guess because of the pattern, maybe it kind of looks like tigers, but what, what it is technically is it's quarter sawn oak. So what that means, quarter sawn, if you were to think of a tree trunk, um, usually, usually boards will will come in order to get as many boards out of the out of the tree as possible. It'll be cut um, well in the most efficient way as possible. But with quarter sawn, it's less efficient, but you get this. So it's like a I mean it's like kind of a luxury upgrade anyway. So if you think of the most efficient way to get your boards out of, out of your tree trunk, that's normal oak. But with quarter sawn, you, you cut it into quarters like that. Um, so then you have like a slice of the pie, but it's like the whole tree trunk. And then, and then it, gives it, it gives that different pattern of the, of the wood, which is super cool looking. And we, we ended up refinishing this one in just a natural finish. So the, the, the slight color that you do see, it's, well, it's mainly it's the color of the wood itself, but we, but we wanted to um, just do lacquer. We do well, sanding sealer and then several coats of lacquer on it. It's super smooth. It's like baby's bottom smooth. It just feels amazing. Um, but we, we wanted to do that because, because any kind of stain we thought would, and it, it does, it, it sort of hides that, that amazing, um, grain pattern. So we just did the sanding sealer and lacquer and it turned out awesome. So this piano uh, was a was a mega rebuild. Let's look on the inside. Maybe I'll just give you a little teaser and then I'll show you the inside. That sounds good. Let's check out the inside. All right, here we have the fully rebuilt piano. So, of course, rebuild, the term rebuild can be applied to all sorts of different levels. Um, I've heard some technicians refer to a piano as rebuilt if all they've done is just replace the hammers. In my opinion, that's disingenuous. That's just not true. This piano, however, I would definitely characterize as a full rebuild. Okay, so you can see the, the plate. Let's start there. The plate is, we, we had the plate out and this is redone. This is an automotive paint. It's just beautiful. You can see, hopefully, the you can see the reflection on it because it's just so shiny and beautiful and it's and it's a really it's automotive so it's really hard and it just looks good and of course the brand name is kind of blackened there on the on the plate then all of these bolts and things just doesn't matter it doesn't these are original but they're they're cosmetic so they're all they're all I mean they're functional but but cosmetically we redid them as well and then all the strings are new of course all the tuning pins are new all the dampers, we used a triple damper on this, so I don't know if you can get the, see how long those dampers are. That's a triple, which, uh, what that does, <clears throat> I've had people on, on these rebuilds that have complained when I've used the double dampers, which is what they used originally in 1918, they're much smaller, and they don't dampen as well as modern tastes would dictate. And so, whereas these triple dampers, they dampen much, much better, much more like these, these grand pianos and modern uprights for that matter, which is what people today's taste want. They want something that's going to cut off, you know, as close to, to as soon as you let go, 
it's going to just cut off the sound. And so those triple dampers do a much better job. Of course, the hammers are replaced. These are hammer butts. This part right here, those are all brand new as well. And the bridle straps come with the hammer butts. The bushings on the keys, so those keys are really nice and firm. Um, not, not much movement there, which is what you want. And, you, and you'll notice on an older piano, the bushings will be, will be worn out. And so there's lots of wobble and shaking and rattling of the keys. Of course, the keys are replaced. Originally, this piano would have been ivory. Looks like we got some. Uh, um, and so the, so the ivory on this was, was in bad shape. So we just redid it with brand new keys. Check out down here. You can see the, again the um, the plate. How beautiful all that is. When we had the plate out, we redid this soundboard. You can see um, these are these are where the cracks were. All of that has been filled in with new wood. Of course, that's pretty obvious where the new wood is. And then everything's sanded smooth and then lacquered over. So that's, that's all done there. So no, no cracks in this soundboard. And then the base bridge, this is the base bridge right here. That also has been replaced. There were cracks in the old base bridge. So we duplicated the old pattern of the, of the previous base bridge and built a new one. And then of course the pedals, these pedals are original. These are the original um, the original pedals, but they've been replated. So they're beautiful. And I don't know what else I'm missing. Of course casters. You can see the casters under here. Those are rubber, double rubber casters. What would have originally been used on this piano is a is a steel caster. So, so if you have uh, like a wood floor with steel casters, the weight of the piano, it's about probably 600, 650 pounds, something like that. The weight of the piano is going to dig into the, into the wood floor, damage the floor. Rubber, however, it's not going to damage a wood floor. And also it just makes it super easy, especially those swivel double rubber, just makes it super easy to, to move all around the room whenever that's needed. Well, I can put that on in a minute. super well built originally in 1918 and if I do say so myself it was super well rebuilt uh, again in 2020 so really really happy with this piano um, so if this if this tiger wood or quarter sawn oak or whatever you want to call it if it speaks to you I don't think there's a better I mean even even new pianos um, even a brand new like the black shiny pianos, the Yamahas or the Highlands or whatever, 
they don't sound this good. And frankly, they're much smaller, so it's not really a fair. I think this one is 56, 57 inches tall, which is huge. And the biggest pianos that you'll find today um, are going to be, well, 48 inches is a pretty big piano, 50 inches you can find, and every once in a while you can find a 52 inch piano that's manufactured today. And then this one's another four, five, six inches on top of that, which is why it sounds so amazing. Anyway, that is a full rebuilt piano, um, and this piano, without question, will last for like three generations. I mean, two generations, three generations probably, um, and by the fourth generation, it'll probably need to be rebuilt again, like 80 years from now. So, uh, yeah, super happy with how that turned out. Come check it out. I think, uh, I think if, if vintage pianos are your thing, um, and you want something unique, not, not just kind of a run-of-the-mill black and shiny piano, you want something unique, then, uh, then I couldn't recommend this one more highly. Thanks for watching.